Okay, so we've we've looked now at some cubic systems, right? We've we've seen a cubic lattice, and then onto that we positioned atoms in different positions, and we we said, well, what if we put atoms into just the corners, right? Well, then we'd have what we call simple cubic, right? We said, what if we put atoms into the corners plus the uh, the faces? Well, then we had face-centered cubic. Or, you know, we could do plus the, um, the, 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 the body center or the the center of the volume, right? And that gave us body-centered cubic. Now, I don't want you to think that everything is cubic. Um, it's not, I mean, many, 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 that's why we spent so much time on it. Many uh, elements uh, in their crystalline form are actually have a cubic, uh, cubic symmetry, but not everything is. Um, in fact, a relatively common and, and industrially relevant uh, structure that... Uh, uh, that occurs is is this structure that I'm drawing here, where the angles between the axes are still 90. Okay, all those angles are 90, the three angles, so that's orthogonal. But that there's a second lattice parameter, so the edges there are are equal. It's a square base, but the height is elongated, and that's called tetragonal. I mentioned that this was industrially uh, relevant because when you take a high carbon steel and you rapidly cool it, you quench it, it forms martensite. Martensite, which is tetragonal with atoms in body centered uh, positions. So it's actually body centered tetragonal. It's another structure. And this happens to be a very, very hard and brittle. Uh, structure, but it is uh, important, and I think it's worthwhile that you um, realize there are other systems, other uh, crystal systems, apart from just cubic ones. Cubic, again, is probably the most important and it's a great way to get started, but there are others. Um, another one, just uh, you know, briefly, that uh, you uh, may encounter, and you can even see some other videos that I've posted on it, if you are interested for more detail and for more information on it. Uh, is hexagonal, and specifically hexagonal close packed is another is, is one um, that uh, occurs uh, somewhat frequently in, in in metals. Okay, so it's got a hexagonal um, structure like that. Sometimes it's broken down into a slightly smaller unit cell um, based on this parallelopiped that I identified there. Six faces. Um, and, you know, again, if we look at the angles, like I discussed over here, well, the angle here between these two axes in, in the base is now 120 degrees. And what about the lattice parameters? Well, you know, in the base, they're equal, but again, we've got a different height. It's elongated a little bit. Um, this angle is 90. So by actually going to all the different comb combinations of the three angles, combinations of the three angles, and we, we actually refer to them as alpha, uh, beta, and gamma, and the three lattice parameters, um, A, B, and C, we can define all the crystal systems. In fact, there's, there's seven crystal systems. But I just wanted to make you aware of the fact that there are others, and so you can be aware of the way that we can define them. A final note that I'll just make here is we can follow this same reasoning or the same organized approach where we think of first the crystal system, that's you know the lattice, the set of points, and then where we position the atoms in that system. So here, you know, wait, we just put them in the corners, we get simple cubic. We put them in the corners plus face center positions, we get face center cubic. We put atoms in the corners and in the body center position, we get body center cubic. Well, we can follow that similar sort of reasoning even when we look at 
ceramic crystal structures, and sometimes this is this is done. So I wanted to just draw that to your attention. You know, when when I teach um, ceramic structures, say sodium chloride, for example, I find it, you know, based on my experience teaching, I think it's easiest to digest when you think about okay, let's let's position the big ones first. Let's position the anions. And so I always do that. I, I present the anions first and I say, let's imagine them in a familiar position. Uh, and, and so we position them in the F and C, the face centered positions, front fa uh, top face, front face, right side face, left side face, back face there, bottom face. And then I say, all right, let's, now that we've got those, let's position cations. Okay, and so for for this particular example that I'm looking at here, of rock salt or NaCl, we position the anions, we position the um, chlorine anions first, and then we position sodium anions, uh, sodium uh, cations rather, in these octahedral positions on the edges of the cube. And I think that's a nice way to think about it. Uh, but I wanted to also draw your attention to the fact that. Another way of thinking of this is you could think of instead an FCC lattice with instead of a single atom at a position as we had for FCC, we have an atom pair. We have sodium and chlorine at each lattice uh, site, at each of the face-centered sites. Uh, so, so that's another way that, that sometimes people think of this. As I just circled the ones in that front uh, plane where you can see there's a pair. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, and uh, in FCC positions, we have a pair of anions and cations. Another way of thinking of it, you may encounter it if you're looking at other resources as you're studying, uh, and I just wanted to make you aware of that.